Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the life of a makeup artist. I am floored. I'm a little nervous. You know that meme on a date, kind of nervous. <laughs> I am here with the Rachel Estabrook. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I mean, to celebrate Makeup Artist Month, you know, the internet always has these weird days like yeah. pizza, National Pizza Day. And I saw that it was National Makeup Artist Month in November. And I was like, you know what? Let's just, no, Makeup Artist Day. And I was like, let's just make this into a month. That's amazing. So we have Rachel here with us today. And I am so excited because we have lots to talk about and we have lots oh to gosh. catch up on. It's oh been gosh. a minute. I've known you for a very long time, which is crazy. I've like creepily stalked Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and been so loving everything you do, your podcast, your work. No, she's you're phenomenal. Oh yeah. my god, you are so sweet. <laughs> um, but before we get into all the juice and the things, how are you? Because I mean, honestly, life has been lifing. It's it's it's, it's been, happening. It's been lifing for sure. No, it's been nonstop. I think it's crazy to go from 2020 when we were all just chilling, 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 and now mm -hmm. we're in the heat of 2021, almost on 2022. That's crazy. And work is back full throttle, like yeah. full, full throttle, like completely. Yeah. Which it took me a minute. I still have days where I'm like, I'm exhausted. Like getting back to the regular grind takes a beat. To it's, like, it's an actual miracle that oh. we made this work today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were like, okay, Wednesday. Okay, good. I'm like, thank God this I'm is free. The time. I like, have nothing. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So my intention yeah. with today's podcast is to really just talk about, you know, you, introduce you mm -hmm. to, you know, the life of a makeup artist audience. I mean, um, and really talk about, you know, how being a makeup artist has actually been reimagined. You know, you've told me about all these new yeah. things that you've, you know, taken on. And I think mm -hmm. it's so impressive. And I think that a lot of people could learn from you because we've always been stuck behind the camera, stuck in a right. box. And and what you're doing is amazing. So I want to touch on those things today. Yeah. Um, but first, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit more about Rachel yes. and what you do. Sure, sure, sure. Well, my name is Rachel. Hello. Welcome. Um, I'm 28. I've been doing this for now about 10 years, which is crazy to see. Oh, like, my God. I didn't. I even looked at my timeline the other day. I've been in New York since I was 18, <gasps> which is crazy. From going where? To, um, Boston. So oh, nice. Far. I'm so nice. local. But, yeah, no, I mean, I've been working at this. I started at the Makeup Forever Academy, which is where I really got, like, the base of my foundation to even know what's up and how to get into this industry, start a network, get a platform of people that I could work with and know where to kind of put my toes into. Right. I'm still all over the place. Like, I always thought I'd find a particular <laughs> niche. No, but you are. You, I'm all I over mean... the place. I'm, like, I am I work well in chaos, to okay. be honest. I, I get work it. well in it. So it's hard for me to commit to one specific sector of the industry. Right. I might go in times and places of my life where I stick to one thing in particular. So a lot of my career has taken me to Broadway. Right. Working in theater has been a really solid place in my life right. and it's near and dear to my heart. I grew up, I was a theater kid. Right. So that was always That's like so cool, I didn't nature. know that. Oh my God, yeah. I Did you dance? Like, Did you do the things? And Can you sing us a I song? Mean, oh God. <laughs> So I never made it, and so I went to the crew side. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I got into high school, I was like, y'all are taking this real serious. You right. want to do this it's like those. Real? Is it like those teen movies where people are, like, really intense? Yes. <laughs> yes. We had a really crazy program, too, but that's when I took on, I actually made a whole makeup course for my high school. Wow. Because I was like, okay, y'all have, you know, well, costumes, you have this, you right. have that. I said, y'all need a makeup department. So I went ham and got kids to sign up, as you do, right. for the theater department, having specifically doing makeup for the shows. It was a lot of fun. So then were you like the popular girl in school for makeup? <laughs> you know what? They're I like, got you voted. need to blend your eyeshadow. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, looking back on things I wrote, I was like, wow, I really thought I knew everything, telling yeah. people what to do. I'm like, no, and I knew nothing. That's the wrong color, babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much powder for you. <laughs> Horrible. It was a mess. It was crazy. I had a lot of Kevin Aquan books, like wow. theatrical I mean, yeah. books, because it still wasn't the time when right. I was in high school of like crazy YouTube phenomenons right. where people go and you learn so much from that. I was still heavily reading theater books in high school of learning how to apply latex and create right. aging and do all that kind of stuff. It was wow. Wild. So to going from that to then school to then now, right. I'm like. It's just a crazy evolution. It's really wild to see how it's come about for me. I'm feeling grateful, yeah. But I'm wondering, what was that little um, point where you're like, I think I want to try the makeup. Like, I, what is that, you know? You know, I always try to look back at it, and I'm like, where, where did it come from? I still sometimes, I'm not a good teacher, and this is where I've learned that kind of sentiment of, like, why and how to. I think it's an innate ability that I have. Right. Because I don't fully know sometimes when I'm doing something, why I understand how right. to do it or the technique. I think it's just a passion and my medium ends right. up being makeup, but I love art, I love creativity, and that's just how I'm able to 
express myself, but it started, I was young. I was a very girly girl. I was always playing with my mom's stuff, always doing my grandma's makeup, playing with my cousins. It was just, that was a hyper focus. I love that. Um, and then with theater, being a theater kid, you right. just innately, you're wearing stage makeup. Yeah. So I loved getting dolled up. I loved doing that. That right. wasn't regular for me. That was only special for like, School play time. So you, you know? didn't get in trouble when you took your grandmother's makeup because I definitely used no. to sneak. <laughs> I used to be like, put my finger in the eyeshadow no. and be like, no. <laughs> no, I wish my grandma would have us do her makeup. Oh, nice. <laughs> She'd be like, check, come, come sit here, play with my hair, do my makeup. So we were like right. in, in deep with her. She loved it. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so this is one world that I know nothing about. Theater, yeah? Theater, Broadway. Oh, okay. It's a whole different world back yes. there. And I know we, you know, we met through Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. Um, <laughs> and so can you tell us more about, like, how is that life? Because I think a lot of makeup artists, you know, everybody wants to be in fashion. And, you know, yeah. and I think that there's so much creativity mm -hmm. on Broadway and there's so yeah. much going on. Mm -hmm. Like, what was your, what was the experience, you yeah. know, doing that? She, Broadway to me is always like the ugly stepsister. People don't, like, <laughs> they don't really take her seriously, right, you know? Right. Even when it comes to, like, the Tonys as a red carpet moment, that even had to be flipped and, like, commercialized and right. like glamorized by right. like you know Anna Wintour when she came in was like y'all you need to get this red carpet right like right. that's the only place where the award season and actors and dancers and performers I just feel like they don't get the credit that's right. due to them and right. that also then transfers into the crew members right where it's like we are working oh my god you have one day off which right. is the crazy part unlike tv and film you have the weekend off I understand they're fighting for different things right now but we that backstage and the amount of effort people and for the pay you're doing it at right. is extremely different than what you're getting from when you work on a TV and film set. So you have to really be passionate and absolutely adore working in theater in order to sustain working in theater, in right. my opinion. Like my goal leaving Makeup Forever was I need to work at Lion King. Right. That was dream. So when I acquired that job, that was my first like big, big makeup job. I love how she said that, you know, casually. No. You know, like, oh, my God. I, I dreamed did about it. So, and I worked my ass off to get. I love Elizabeth. Shout out to Elizabeth Combs. She's been there for 20 plus years. Right. She's like the head makeup artist there. Insane. And I just, she didn't need me at first because I hit her up and I was like, hey, if you need any, what they call it is swings. Right. So you might be a day player in TV, but it, you swing on Broadway. So oh, you wow. can swing. I never heard that Multiple before. shows. Yeah, yeah. Which is intense. So they right. have, you know, swings that are dancers and they know multiple tracks is what right. they call it. So you come in and you learn your track. For example, Lion King has four different tracks. Mm -hmm. So the track that I know is Zazu. So I'm doing specific uh, makeups and specific background um, quick changes and stuff right. throughout the show. So you there, you're working the show the whole time. You right. do pre-show, you do wrap up after show, all that. But yeah, she didn't she didn't need a swing for a very long time. And I kept being like, Are you doing one yet? Finally, I got an interview. And it's not like you just get in either. Right. You've got to interview. She's yeah. got to test your makeup skills. She checks out your portfolio. This woman still to this day, which like I love her level of excellence that she looks at this work. She will go and sit in the audience with binoculars <gasps> and look at your makeup oh and make sure that God. shit is straight. Yeah. And if it's not, you're going to hear about it. Do we need to meet her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do need I to love. bring her on. She it's, sounds like a cat. No, one. she's phenomenal. So it just it really it made me understand. I have so much respect for theater artists when they look at it in a fashion sense right. or a TV sense where it's so meticulous and the work is clean. Right. Because there are artists, I'm sure, or designers that go, well, you have all this stage, you have right. all this uh, uh, depth between right. you and the actor, so you can kind of get a little sloppy with right. your work. And you're gonna, it's forgiving. Right. So with the lights and the distance Quick between the fast. audience, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just throw it on. Right. But I really commend the artists that take the time and do this phenomenal seamless makeup work no right. matter that it's always excellent so right. she's one of them and it's been a pleasure to work under her i love that yeah but you know what i was thinking about recently like mm -hmm. you know you you you're on lion king you're doing these things do you think that new york kind of makes us What's the word? Kind of accustomed to like these things happening where yeah. you're the level of excitement you probably had for the first one. <laughs> yeah. Like now you're on Aladdin and I you're on know. this one. Like you've done so many it's where it's like yeah. you kind of got accustomed and sometimes you mm -hmm. have to like give yourself like a tiny little slap like Oh, 100%. No, 100%. I have to remember like Broadway is the highest caliber of theater. Right. There's nothing ab above that. Right. So once you reach that as far as theater people and dreamers and actors and performers in that sense, you're you're at the top. Right. So it does take a moment and even though I mean sometimes you're literally in a basement or in a very tiny room that's your 
hair and makeup room. It's right. really crazy circumstances you're working under sometimes. It doesn't feel as glamorous. Right. But then you do realize what you're doing, the audiences, and if you kind of keep that mindset that every day you're working, there is a new face out there seeing it for the very first, first time. time. Yeah. It kind of reignites that flame of like, yeah. oh my God, this is Lion King or Aladdin or right. somebody's first experience that we're contributing to. And painting that picture and keeping that show really clean right. is super special. But yeah. of course, I mean, naturally you de you have your days you get jaded. Right. I remember a girl backstage at Lion King, she's like, why are you smiling so much? It was my first week, right. I was super jazzed. So I was like, I'm just excited to be here. Right. Like that's all I could say. Right. I was like, I, I'm so <laughs> hyped to be here. She was like, that will fade. Right. And I was like, damn girl. You're like the meme of this, um, the dog where it's like in the fire. And you're like, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> But She's I like, stop that. smiling. Yeah, yeah. I love that. No, I loved it. But so you have been in the union for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. And again, not my area of expertise. Like, was yeah. that a hard process? Because there are so many different ways to get into the union, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, you know, yep. if you are, I'm not sure if you've heard, but mm -hmm. um, for those of you who are listening, you can check back to the episode with Jessica Padilla and Chris Malone. Yes, um and, uh, you know, yeah, we love them. We love but them. you've spent so much time at Broadway. What was your process? Yeah. Was it like, oh, I've spent so many times here. I didn't have to do anything else. Like, kind of. Kind to of? be honest for me, yeah. Only because you have to acquire the 180 days. And at that time, I had I'd worked so many shows. I right. worked at Radio City prior to that. And I did their spring show, which didn't do too hot. But it was a phenomenal experience right? personally. <laughs> I had a great time. Didn't do too hot in reviews, but that's okay. But I racked up. You're working on these for... I mean, my God, almost a year, a couple months. So getting the 180 days was, and right. you have three years to do so. Right. So I had already been working things since I was 22. Right. 20, so I think by the time I was 24, I was able to get it in the two-ish years. Um, and it, it just- quick. Which was quick. And yeah. the only, my motivating reason though, to even get in the union, to be honest, was insurance. Right. <laughs> I was 20, yeah, I was you, young. It's like you're in a, you have a job and you get a paycheck and like yes. our like payroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. yeah, they take out stuff for your I mean, they put into your four one K for you, you right. get health insurance, you get all this coverage. And I just as a freelancer was struggling at that young age, being like, Well, what happens when I'm twenty six? What am I gonna do? Right. Like I don't and I wasn't super in deep with a TV and film right. career yet. So I mean I couldn't have been because I wasn't in the union. So I was trying to figure out, well, how do I navigate this? Do I pay right. for my own insurance? That was a big building block for me to go and push to get my days to require that and have that protection from them. But um, yeah. yeah, for me, it was a lot of uh, just theater work um, and a mix of non-union right. on set days. Right. Uh, but yeah, it was heavily pushed. All my girlfriends at the same time, we all went out for it in like the same year and luckily got in. But it was, it's a long process because it's, it's days, but then you got to show proof of living here, your yeah. portfolio. You have to do an in-person review from union members who sit with you and look at your portfolio. I didn't think I was going to get in because of my review. That's like America's Next Top Model, Ooh. but for makeup artists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? You have to show mad right. stuff. Like you can do cuts and bald caps and period makeups and regular makeups and all these things yeah. have to be checked off. There's a list you have to acquire. Wow. So once they're all checked off, and I, I just didn't think the lady liked my work because oh. she was like, this kind of looks like that, but it also looks like that. So I was like, I'm out. Like, I didn't make Damn. it. <laughs> I got lucky that I was like, oh, thank God. She was just more like, she had right. a poker face. But right. yeah, it was hard. It was a very, very nerve wracking process. Extremely rewarding in the end. Yeah. So Would you say Broadway is something that makeup artists should kind of explore? Because I don't really hear people talking about it Ever. as much if you're in... TV, maybe you can explore yeah. Broadway if you're looking to get into the union and, and build your hours. Absolutely. I think it's a really great way to do it, in fact, um, because people need days, especially swinging. You mm. don't have to commit, same thing like a day player. You don't have to jump on a show and say, you know, Tuesday through Sunday, I'm committed to 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at night is basically the hours. Right. You're pretty, you're, mm, your livelihood is also swept away a bit with that kind of schedule. But 100%. And if you're a swing, you can swing multiple shows. And when they call you, you can say, yes, I'm, I'm ready to jump in, or no, I need the day off. You have a right. little bit more freedom with that, but you're able to build your days quite right. quickly. They always need people, right. so it's great. But I don't, I, I agree with you. I don't know why people don't look at theater the way that they the glamorize the fashion world right. or TV and film even. Right. I don't know why it doesn't get that same level of like love. Yeah. Um, and I just, I look at theatrical makeup so similar to fashion, especially right. in fashion week. Exactly. It's like exactly. elevated if you see glam. It's a and, and hat and the, <laughs> you're like, wait. Yes, <gasps> all the things on? that they do, right? So, and especially when you put your hand at it. I mean, I had a blast when I worked Aladdin in the genie track. I got to cover him every night, his whole bald head and his face in glitter. Mm -hmm. There's a whole quick change where you were just 
dousing him in glitter and it was just so much fun and throwing on this gold right. eye and like so it was it's fun it's theatrical right. but it's so it has that intensity of behind the scenes of fashion exactly. like where you're like go 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 right so you kind of get the adrenaline but also the comfort of a consistent paycheck yeah so it's nice exactly. that has the best of both worlds in that way i love that so you mentioned um your you know your not livelihood but your sorry I have the question in my head. No, you have this. I'm going to start this over. So you mentioned that your, you know, your livelihood or your social life kind of suffers when yeah. you're taking this, you know, risk to like, okay, I'm going to put my all into it. Yeah. What were, how did you emotionally deal with that? Because you're dealing yeah. with all this time, mm -hmm. you know, I know you just celebrated your anniversary. Yay! Congrats. We love love over here, okay? <laughs> we love love. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad that you said that, though, because to be honest, I was single as hell during all those years. <laughs> okay, that's the I answer, was, it was guys. A big, I'm going to be real Delete about it. your profile on Hinge right <laughs> now. Single, get rid of your man, get rid of your woman, and get out. Uh, no, but it's crazy because the balance is, is really hard. Right. And it, fortunately for me at that time in my career, I wasn't... I, I had just gotten out of a relationship, literally, literally, as I booked uh, Lion King. Right, because you travel with Lion so, King, yep, too. I Did you with travel them. with any other shows? Like, What was no. that like? Was it crazy? That was crazy. That was probably the funnest year time in my life, to be honest. Uh, being single and running around, not in that sense. Like, we had a good time. But they, it was just fun that you could just pick up and leave. And right. I didn't have that relationship that meant so much to me that I would maybe question, like, wait, I'm going to be gone for a month. Right. I'm going to be gone for two months in the middle of, like, I was in the North American later. <laughs> right. Like, I can't take you with me. Please. Some people are really smart. And if they have a partner that works in the industry, right. they will contract them into their jobs with them so they can take Damn, them on tour. That's next level. Yes, yes. Which I'm like, I love that commitment. It's everything. But if you work the same job and they're like, hey, my girlfriend's a carpenter and I'm a makeup artist. Can we book right. them on this gig with me? And they, they do it a lot of the time because right. they understand, especially if you're going on tour full time. Right. Again, I was just a swing. So right. I'd come in and be the cute babysitter for a month or two and be right. out. Um, but yeah, when it comes to livelihood, when you're young and running around, it's when you're on your own, it's different. But when you're creating a family and you have other priorities on right. top of your career that you're still trying to build, I'm right. still heavily career is still really high for me. I'm I still know. at a What's your sign? place. Aries. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I, I totally relate. I yeah. Totally like relate. I'm just heavy on like career and like that. It, it gives me so much, uh, it fills my cup up in a right. really heavy way. So but it does make me question now the hours, the days, the things that I'm committing to because, I mean, even with this boyfriend that I had, you said with three years, but he was with me and I was working on Broadway towards the end on a recent show I was working on, Be More Chill, and that was full time. I right. saw him. We were passing ships. He's a nine to fiver. I would right. leave for work at five. Right. I would be home at 10 p.m. It would be hello, good morning, and good night. That's it. How do you deal with that? Though? It was it was it's a lot right it was a lot it's it, you don't i didn't feel as connected to him right. for sure you don't you and you just, start to feel like bad right you're oh my like, god because you're like girlfriend. it's me i'm yeah. like not showing up for you and you're just you know but he was so we talk about it all the time i actually had him on my podcast and oh we my talked god, about I it. To to it. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy we i was like how was it like dating a freelancer because right. i mean even when we were dating it's that hey i'm not available or i got a job last minute i know we had dinner right. scheduled and I'm like, but i can't plan <laughs> Like a week, even in a, advance? a week in advance, not I'm busy a month. That's like <laughs> you're asking me oh, for like 2023. 20, exactly. At this point. <laughs> like, I don't know where I'm going to be at ever. Like what? But no. So he was really understanding and it. It made it work and I'm thankful for it. But I'm happy to get right. to being in a more place in my career where I'm able to say the no's. Right. So I can pick and choose. Hey, I need to give him this weekend right. or a day or this night or whatever. Right. And be there for the important stuff for us because right. it's just families. Up my yeah. high, high, high. It, yeah. it might not, it's probably just above right. career, to be honest, for me right now at 28. But yeah, no, I just, it's always a balance. It's right. always a juggling like act. So if there's anyone that's listening mm -hmm. that is going through that right now, like what would yeah. you say, like how mm -hmm. to handle it? Like, cause I'm sure it probably would have brought up some arguments. Oh my some, God, like, girl. There's, like, there's a whole different podcast. We're going to have a whole different episode. <laughs> <Some tension. laughs> so like, yeah. How, how did you deal? Like, yeah. you know, what, what advice would you give? Because I think that's a uh, things that we don't really talk about as no, makeup never. artists. It's like, you know, your family's going on a trip and you're like, mm. but I have this life changing or I hope life changing yeah. job that might, is great or a great rate. And it's yeah. like, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. I miss out on some holidays and things at the beginning when it comes to specifically, and this might sound crazy, but I base it off of 
it, it, let's say it's a wedding, right. okay? And not to shade a birthday, but a birthday <laughs> comes around every damn year. So like, I'll catch you next year. I'm, I'll catch you next year probably, depending Hopefully. on the gig. If it's like right. my, you know, I, I like. I also then base it off of where I'm at in my life, mm -hmm. financially, mm -hmm. uh, um, creatively, right. and I try to do all those things across the board. So younger artists are just artists when they're trying to always do the whole pick and choose, pick and choose. Right. I feel like you have to do that game of evaluation. Right now, are you really hurting for money? That's a toss up. Maybe right. the gig comes around, they're paying you 2K, and you're like, I gotta take I gotta that. Take I gotta do this. Yeah. Sorry, and it's unfortunate, and then make for it up on the back end. That's right. where I think people miss out in our life, is right. that we're constantly on that hamster wheel, is that on the times where we say we can't make it, we don't make up for it later. Right. So if they actually, you actively try to implicate in your life to make up for those times where you couldn't come through, try to make and plan special times. Uh, my right. best, best friend lives out in Pennsylvania. She's mm -hmm. a makeup artist, Kyle Harder. And we make it a do to FaceTime to catch up and right. be there for specific events. She just had a daughter. Oh, so nice. Halloween, I'm not taking clients on Halloween. Right. I'm going to go trick or treating with her. Like right. you just start to evaluate like what, is gonna mean the most to you if I look back in a year and go, damn, was that job right. worth missing that moment? Right. Probably not right. a lot of the times, right. but assess. Cause we still gotta work, we gotta make money. We exactly. have to do what we need to do, so. I love that, yeah. you know. Check your bank account and make Check decisions. Your <laughs> <laughs> make your decisions. If it's on red, you have no friends right. now. You have to go to work. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So you have worked on Lion King, yes. Aladdin, Book of Mormon, Kinky Boots. I mean, Such you've done it all. Yeah. And now you're kind of transitioning into this phase of day yes. playing and yep. TV. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Well, that's fun because my system is used to the swinging, like I said, on Broadway. So I like the freedom. I clearly have a, an issue with commitment because mm -hmm. if I got asked to do a full-time TV show, would I take it if it was creative enough and had the right things with the right. contract and it was cute? Yes, that would right. kind of be stupid to not because it's a phenomenal money, you can't deny it. Right. Um, and if it's a three-month contract, maybe they're you know shooting for four months, whatever have you, okay, I can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel with that Right. and I could commit to myself. When it comes to day playing, I like the freedom because if they call me, let's say I'm having a really crazy mental health week. Right. Maybe I'm exhausted right. because the week before I worked my ass off and now I can say no. I have the freedom to say no, right. the financial stability to say no. Right. So when it comes, I can be like, I can't do this right now. Right. And then they'll pick me up next week or what have you. There's always shows that are in need of people right. coming in. It's been fun. It's also stressful because it's still COVID. We're still in the midst of COVID. So protocols and things that have to happen on set is still similar to you know your your mask sitting there for 12 right. plus hours that's right. exhausting yeah um the food situation isn't always that cute because it's all pre-prepared in a box right option one two three honey out the truck like right. that's what it is right so it's just different circumstances so um not crazy drastic right. but it's still the hours that we are working under those things it just adds an extra little bit right. of stress on yeah. your body i think honestly um and yeah, it's just, and the testing, that's a whole new part that's just a part of scheduling. You have to be available to test before you go on set. And not, and like most people, I mean, you're getting tested two or three days before, and then you're getting tested the day of. You might get tested, depending how long it's the break is. It's a lot. It's a lot on your schedule. It's a lot on your body. Um, if you're with a phenomenal production, they will pay you to test, which is great. They'll give you a cute little, right, you know, point. cash thing for yeah. getting your test, which I appreciate because then they're acknowledging it's my time that you're exactly. using on this day exactly. that I could be on set or I'm working. Exactly. I got to run to the middle of Brooklyn and get tested. That's so easy. It's a different balance, but so far so good for me. I'm not ex overextending right. myself is what I'm learning to kind of yeah. preserve more and not say yes to everything. Right. I don't need to say yes to everything and be running around, girl. Listen, it's I mess. love that self-awareness. <laughs> yeah, it's being able to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it takes a minute, like Oof. it's so important. Yeah. So when I had the conversation with Jessica and Chris, we were talking about what what would it be like when we do get back to set. Yeah. Now I think I know that things have kind of calmed down mm -hmm. slightly. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned like you could get you know might get paid to be on hold but mm -hmm. what was it like from the beginning when we first started to get mm -hmm. back on set to now because it's yeah. a little different yeah because I, I I'm not gonna lie I've been on some jobs where oh, yeah. they didn't even ask me for a COVID test and I'm just like Woo. I'm still gonna get tested I'm still gonna do it for I'm real. still wearing two masks on set yeah yeah but yeah. what what was the that what's the transition like yeah I would say 
every set is different. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think with budget and just how that team is running their production, but every team, at least when I was in the heat of it, the biggest comparison I can see is that there's always a COVID safety team on set. Yes. That's kind of implicated now in every production or what they're doing. And that's with Broadway and with everyone. So all the people that are full time are always getting tested. I mean, my God, I don't even know how many times per per week that they have to do this right. constantly. Um, and then if things do, if anybody comes up that it's positive or something, the whole right. production shuts down. Wow. And they go on a break for sometimes it's, I don't know if they're back to the traditional 14 quarantine right. or it's just a week now yeah. or it's what it's have crazy you. crazy in LA right now. It's crazy. My friend is like. Keep shutting down. Booked. Yeah, but yeah. she's she's getting booked on stuff because everything, people are not working and then some producers are like, well, I feel bad for carrying on this thing so I'm shutting everything down. Right. So it's a, it's a lot it's happening. It's a lot. And, yeah. so, and I get it. I, first and foremost, the safety of everyone. So they're trying their best that they can. It's just a hard thing. I mean, also vaccinations have become Right. low-key mandatory right. uh, for most sets right. and proving that and showing that um, proof. And that, I think, has brought down a little bit of the level of stress because when I was working in the heat of it and that wasn't vaccinations weren't a yeah. thing, I was like you. I right. had the mask. I had the shield. I had right. well, I was right. like sanitizer on every pocket. Right. Like it was. I mean, give me a, um, a hazmat <laughs> suit while, while we're here. <laughs> I know. We're so close with these people and like they're unmasked. So there's a lot of things to question and the media wasn't helping us, you know, calm down in that right. way. We didn't have too many answers at the time. So. I think they're doing the best they can. I've been fortunate enough to work on nice, safe production. I haven't had any issues. Right. Um, but yeah, if anything, just the level of fear has yeah. been taken down a notch, which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. Um, but same thing across the board for all the protocols has pretty yeah. much stayed in place. So because yeah. being on nice. set is already a stressful thing, and then to sure. add that, and then if you have an Aggie producer, oh. then just just oh my god, I'm, or I'm going home. Yeah, yeah no, all talent. or talent. Yeah. Like I'm, they're freaked about it, yeah. and they're questioning everything you're touching or using. Yeah. Did you sanitize that? We're yeah. already pretty. I mean, makeup I mean, artists, we're trained in cross. We know that. what we're okay. doing here. Okay. So now we have the extra <laughs> things in place. Well, that's another conversation. I'm like, yo, there are some things where I'm like, we're doing the most exactly. with the kit. I'm like, y'all, you don't need these X, Y, and it's right. too much. I'm you like, saw the machine they were trying to get people to buy. <laughs> I was what? like, who's doing this? Who said that we need to, you to put the thing in the machine. a sterilizer on set? The UV machine. I'm like, I will never. What, let me log back. to be laughing. I'm adding a whole other kit fee now. I'm like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> so stupid. I'm like, wait, and now it's like ten people. And it was like this size. It's like how long is it? What is it even gonna do? I have to sit there and wait. Sorry, my brushes are roasting. I'll, I'll get to you in a minute. Like oh, that's God. insane. <laughs> but that's even different now. Like, imagine getting someone through. We get rushed like a right. mother. Right. Oh my God. No, I'm, I'm like, down for all the up. procedures, but like you're right. It's like okay, guys. Too much. Sometimes it's, it's like, too much. We're working in fear sometimes. I'm like, chill. We know our, we got it. We're okay. Yeah, because yeah. if you were, if we were being clean all the time, we had to sanitize all right. the time. It so might have been a wake up call for right. some. It might have been a wake up call, but <laughs> this is what we should have been doing. Exactly. So you have been on doing, you know, your TV and there's a lot happening in that world right now. And I just want to talk about this because oh, yeah. I know information has been switching up so fast. Oh, all this, yeah. But that Atsi is on strike right now. Yep. And like, can you tell us more about that and if yeah. it's been affecting like your day playing sure. and what's been going on with that? Personally, I have not been affected. It's it's more happening on the West Coast mm -hmm. where they're like fully striking right now. A lot of productions were because we're trying to be in agreements with producers. We're fighting right now for uh, reasonable wages, higher wages, because mm -hmm. at a crew, I mean, we get paid substantially substantially less like wow. there's a thing called under the line workers and above the line workers when they're referring to people in tv and film and pretty much all of crew hair makeup except we fall under the line wow. so our wages and the way that we're treated is definitely far worse right than an actor or a producer right. or a director the people that you know that above are above the line above the line so <laughs> yeah it's just and, and unfortunately on some sets it's a little bit more pertinent than others mm -hmm. i haven't had the personal experience of having too much craziness and i think that's just due to my own career choice that I haven't done it as much, but mm -hmm. I've heard some insane stories from, from some very close friends that are right. in the shit all died. the time. Have you seen it? And then they, they, they don't even talk about these people. Oh, no. I had to go on set. My call was 542 to be on set in the morning. And it was an 542? hour. Mm -hmm. That's such a weird call. Oh, though. we go by sixes. They do they do it in like military. It's all by sixes. Your wow. hour. Yeah, it's weird. I had to learn. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Very complicated, very confusing. I still have to ask friends, like, sorry, what is the, I'm bad at right. anything math related time. I can't. 
But yeah, 542, I had to leave my house at four or something. Uh-huh. And it was pouring rain, pitch black out because it's fall. Right. And I'm ex- you're exhausted. Right. Like driving in the, and I was like, this is not, I don't know where I'm going. It's a new right. place. It's a location off the Sometimes wherever. you show up and it's just like this oh. abandoned building. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. They're just like, yeah, here you go. And it's, it's you know, unless it's somebody that you've been doing this for a long time, I pity the people that it's new to them reading a call sheet and right. figuring out where the actual holding is versus right. the location versus right. base versus shooting. It's it. Very complicated, right. so I feel like that needs to be deeper. But yeah, as far as the strike going on in LA, it's um, I'm happy that it's happening. All in yes. all, like I back it fully because it's it's well overdue. It's circumstances. This is the 80s. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, that was the last time they strike. So it's just crazy that it's Some of taken us. us even born then. <laughs> like, come we on. were not a present yet. <laughs> but it's just nuts that um, it's come to this. I'm happy it is, and it's. It's wild, the stories. I don't know if you follow the IA stories, IATSE stories on I've seen Instagram. Some of them, yeah. Ah, oh, some of them are, it's like heartbreaking, where yeah. you're like, this is truly disgusting and shocking that the mass amounts of people that have had certain treatments and it's just been overlooked. And yeah. the comments you hear from producers or directors that they just really do not care. Yeah. Point blank period, they don't. They just, they're here to make their money, they're to, to put more money in their pockets, so they don't care, which is always mind blowing because as a crew, we have the mentality that none of this could happen unless every single one of these a hundred some odd people that are behind the scenes of this movie, this TV series that you love and adore and watch every week and stream constantly, we're making it happen. It's not just the actors in front of the screen. Right. We're working our asses off, makeup artists and hair especially. We have pre-calls. Right. We have to wrap your actors out of their hair and makeup. So we are, they're out and then we got to clean up and exactly. then leave. Yeah. So it's just a really rigorous, tiring, grueling, a very, I mean, a really, really crazy industry to be a part of. And people stay in it because, again, they love it. And they right. want, their dreams are to make movies in these TV series. But I think come COVID, everybody realized at what cost. Right. You know, they all had a lot of like, aha, excuse me, aha moments of like, you know what? It's not worth it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I saw what my life was like right. and my health and my well-being over right. the year that I didn't do this to myself seven days out the week, and I'm not willing to go back. Right. And if I am, I want to be compensated, I want to be taken care of, and I want to be protected. Right. It's all very bare basic things they're exactly. asking for. Very basic. So come October 18th, it's official that majority, if not even here on the East Coast, we will strike in solidarity until they make the notion of they need to go ahead and sign wow. on to our agreements because they're not, they're really taking their time. Yeah. Even though we've, uh, we voted uh, all of the people in IATSE, not us, I believe it was the West Coast, I didn't have an opportunity to vote, but they all made a vote and it was like 98% right. voted, yeah, make the move, do wow. what we need to do, go with our requests. So I'm hoping it, it sways. I'm hoping right. it becomes to it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do have to end up going right. through the strike. Wow. Yeah. I just got chills because I think it's so powerful when yeah. people come together to, to make change. Oh yeah. It's like we glamorize booked and busy I and know. it's like I want to be moderately booked and well rested <laughs> <laughs> I want to moderately book myself and yes. well rested like yes. it's day it's and it's true. it's like it sounds good you live in New York girl I'm so oh, busy yeah. booked and, and it's just like but at what cost like right. you said right. your health is important your family yeah. like so you know obviously this episode comes out in November so yeah. we are gonna have put an update on yes. you know on the page mm-hmm. but yeah it's a, it's a little crazy it's crazy it's it's we're hoping for it and I think that's across the board with everybody that's even not in TV and film I think people are even realizing who work in fashion and commercial I mean because even that has their whole other yep. tale of Absolutely. requests and things that need change and people are looking for fair and equal opportunities whether that be with treatment or you know wages whatever it is I just think people have had enough in yeah. the entertainment industry as a right. whole and we're realizing the power like you said that we have when we come together and that though we idolize and glamorize the models or the talent if you will we real there would be nothing if they didn't have the people exactly. making them look the way they do show up the way they do comfort them to make them feel right. their best to do their job it's all a part of it we're all a team right. so I'm happy that people in the crew are finally seeing their value right. and saying, hey, and right. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. And it's nice to see some actors that are actually standing in solidarity. It's, yeah. I wish there was more. Yeah, We've only seen a couple few come out and stand with us for right. the IATSE solidarity. But um, but yeah, they're not, I mean, it's a hard thing. They don't, they're not as directly affected because they're exactly. always going to be in favor. They're always going to be in favor. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes, but it's nice when it happens. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that you said that. And, you know, just to add, mm-hmm. um, tag your artists. 
<laughs> tag, tag your artist, artist. because like you said Ugh. we're all we're part of this equation yes if you look at a puzzle and there's a piece missing you're gonna know there's a piece missing. yes every time and all the pieces need to be there to make all it the be the end result that everyone idolizes and looks for and that perfection and loves and adores those images or anything and it, it is wild to me that we're still in that time where people yeah. don't or they'll post a selfie and it's not it's like, yeah. you're like, like that's happening? ghetto I know. we don't like that so yeah no always support <laughs> your team and i love i always i'll screenshot and i will record a, any speech i see when they shout out their right. makeup artist yeah. I, I die because right. it just feels so rare right actually when i worked at aladdin they the genie james Aguhart, i love him he when his opening act when he like he welcomes it and he yes. comes out as the genie he does this thing where he's standing in front of the audience and he's thanking people uh, this is the very beginning of the show uh -huh. he does it every single show every show he never misses it he thanks his dresser the person who dresses him, his makeup artist, whoever's on that day, whether it be me, another swing, or his wow. uh, permanent Cheryl. Um, he who else does he do? Somebody in crew. Some it's like three or four people. Sometimes he thinks his wife. Every single show, he wow. shouts them out to the audience. Says your name. You hear your name, Rachel, Angel, and it's Aww, so it's like such so a nice. little moment. But you're like that means so much to right. me because him as my actor recognizes that I'm helping right. him day in, day out, get to what he needs to do. Right. And just the level of respect yeah. goes That'll so far. That'll probably make me cry on some days. Oh my God, I, like, every time I'm like, wait, he's saying, it right. just is crazy. Yeah. So it's, but it does the little things that yeah. it's like, that means a lot, yeah. you know? Cause um, you, you, it's easy to feel underappreciated and those oh, little yeah. things mean a lot. Yeah, you're the worker. So it's like, you're expected to do that. But at the same time, if we're passionate about what we do yeah. and we're giving you that extra mile shit, right. and we are, you know the right. artists that come and clock and clock out, right. but if I'm giving you this extra attention, I'm really giving my all to you, I think that hopefully doesn't go unnoticed. Right. And when it is appreciated and thanked, that's all you're looking for. Yeah, that's Just it. to know that it was, you Thank appreciate Thank you goes it. a long way. A huge long way. Thank <laughs> you goes a long way. So you are such a chameleon. Oh. You have been Broadway, your day playing, and now your girl <laughs> has a podcast, and she's also doing, you know, a lot of commercial. I want to yes. talk about your commercial jobs mm -hmm. and doing Zoom tutorials, yeah. 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 which is it, like I love to see it. Okay, it's, it's, we love to see it. <laughs> so, can you tell us before we get into your podcast? Yeah. I want you to share that as well. Yep. Is your commercial work and uh, this Zoom situation? Yeah, because I think. Oof. This is a, this is definitely 2021. We're in the future, oh, yeah, guys. No, this feels because we're different. doing makeup on Zoom now. Okay, <laughs> it feels crazy doing it sometimes. It was it was proposed to me um, from a commercial client, mm -hmm. like you would see a regular medicine commercial, Target, right. whatever have you. And they at the time because they couldn't, they weren't bringing pretty much anybody on set. Majority of the time, a lot of the people that were getting cut were hair and makeup. Right. They were like, we don't have either the space for you on set, safety wise, or they didn't want the budget, whatever. So they reached out to me a specific company and they're like can you do a virtual session and I was like no work was around mind you nobody <gasps> I'm like so and it was a cute rate so I was like uh, yes sure <laughs> I'm gonna act, say yes and act and figure it out later so I was like okay let me be this expert and figure this out and so I kind of just came up with a system and in part to them and them on like organizing it mm -hmm. because basically they give you a budget thank god to provide a kit right. for that specific person. It's the same thing like if you were showing up to do a private lesson or maybe I'm teaching somebody how to do, I don't know, eyebrows or how to just match their skin or what have you. It's like, I need to know what tools you have, what products you have, what's in your artisanal so that you can work with and right. then let me fill in the blanks. Because right. sometimes you're gonna bring a random old ass chapstick right. and one jank ass brush <laughs> and I'm not gonna be able to do anything not with that. Not the ass not brush. <laughs> It happens a lot. I'm like, damn, what do you, why did you get this? Why do you still have it? But it's nuts. So I'm just like, yo, we have to be able to, I won't be able to physically do these people right. over Zoom because they're doing it themselves. Right. So I'm like, how I need to set them up with tools and the right products. So that's cute. So buy them a cute little kit, which I personally love the personal shopping. Right. I think it's so much fun. It's like shopping with, all, not, with, not with somebody else's oh, money. Oh, with somebody else's money. I'm You're out like, here. That. Can I have two yes. of those? <laughs> In Ulta living my best life. I'm like, okay. And they're great. I love the Ulta for it specifically because it's they have drugstore brands. Oh, yeah. So I, love I keep up I my mean, tight clearly, budget. We I know that. Yes. <laughs> but so it's been fun. And then just watching them feel fulfilled. And then the, ta like the client being like, wait, they actually look really good. They've hired me back. I I've been working with them now all year <gasps> so it's been really exciting to see it grow and my confidence in it grow because right. I was like how the hell am I gonna tell somebody how to do a brow right 
via Zoom, via right. me, do, like how am I gonna teach this person? My best advice to it is it's I have to do it on myself. Right. I'm not a good educator. I really am not. I don't see that in my career. Right. Um, but when it comes but to the one-on-one. But here you are one, doing it, though. I know. In a, so I maybe, know. maybe we reimagine uh, that statement. People maybe have we, said that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're <laughs> like, successful. yeah. Maybe you don't have to fake it. You know, sometimes you're like, see, I'm this. But I know. I am, I'm all about affirming things. Yes. But you're doing it and you're doing it's it true. well it's true it's going it's working so far so we're I'm it's a work in it. progress it's i like that progress, i like it's that. it's been a fun learning curve for me it's helped me understand the whys of what mm -hmm. you're doing because mm -hmm. you know we get an autopilot and we do a face and it's like i don't need to explain to my client why i'm doing your right. blush like this and yeah. just making you look good you look happy get right. out of my face okay but <laughs> online <laughs> okay but if i get out but once you do it there it's different so that's been really fun so the zoom teachings has been great lucrative but it also like you had said it's kind of taught me of like oh i could take this under my belt and use it in an own form for my own personal business and advertising it to friends family potential clients to say hey like i've taught somebody how to do their wedding makeup because uh, right. i can't be there for the day or she doesn't want to fly somebody out so we do a session and i teach what what are you going to do the day of yourself right and i get them confident in their products and what they're doing and how to finesse their face you know, teach them, they can mm -hmm. record it if they want and then send them on their way. There's a specific rate for that. Right. And then, yeah, do what we do. But it's it's been a really fun thing and a way to expand our business when, again, right. we don't know what's going to happen. Right. What if we're in another shutdown in 2022? We don't know You're when gonna life be on is going to go. like this. Yeah. Eating snacks and be like, yeah, do this. <laughs> Eat I, I know you have a sweet tooth. You're going to be eating all the candy. <laughs> They're like, lady. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just pick up the blush. I'm like, blind. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. It looks good. Get out of here. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, no it's, it's a good comfort, though, That's to be so like, funny. all right, we have something in our back pocket we could work with. And I hope other people, I mean, we see it all the time. Yeah. YouTubers, I mean, you, it's it's the lack of the hand on, but it's it's there. It's right. It's been there. So it's exciting to see. And I'm sure we'll see more of it is is hands on virtual education, because I think all in all in the future, we're, a lot of our stuff is going to be yep. tech related, virtual related. So I think it's going to be something that really takes a full form in the industry for yeah. sure. Down the line, absolutely. I'll see what companies do with it. Yeah. But um, if small commercial companies are doing it, I'm like, I'm sure. I'm right. sure it will take its wave. So I love that. Yeah, I absolutely fun. love that. <laughs> um, and I think that is great because it gives you know, makeup artists who want to be in the industry mm -hmm. more, you know, imagination of like right. what can, what is possible. Right. Well, you know especially I mean? when people are building a family or, yeah. I mean, I'm at that stage, I'm 28. I have like the biggest baby fever you've ever, <gasps> oh, I am Ooh, like so, Baby so... Rachel coming yes! soon, oh 2022. God, <laughs> Let's put that ring on Stay first tuned. and oh. we'll figure it out. Yes, you got to put, this if you man. like it, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to put a, you know. We're getting, we're getting it. But yeah, it's, it's so, it's crazy how it's, I always thought, oh, that's not a thing. My butt, my whole body and being is babies like wow. really really on top for me personally it's just there it's there it's there so I'm like how when I watch my friends in TV and film and they're working to I'm like oh what, so when do you see your kid when right. are you around to do and I want to be a hands-on mom I've always struggled with that concept of can you raise a family and then also have a really booming career especially in what we yep. do and I get mixed answers all the time and a lot of them is no Right. <laughs> a lot a lot of the time majority is no you can't have that right. all and you do end up sacrificing a very large amount of your uh mommy time your right. personal time because you just you, we physically have to leave the house right. to do what we do so now i'm like okay well if i can find ways to do what i do from home yeah. and have a more lucrative schedule and still be able to be there for especially the growing years right. that means a lot to me personally yeah then i think i'll be better off so i'm doing my damnedest right now to set it up for success that I can create that kind of livelihood for yeah. myself yeah that's amazing have do you have you seen that um photo that uh Alex Box posted I think it was a few years oh. ago oh my where god she had her um yes. kid yes. in hand and it's like you kind of have to make decisions for your life yep. sometimes and not your career yes so absolutely. I love that you're putting things in place absolutely um and also you know with you doing these zoom tutorials working yeah. commercial clients like really I would say expanding your portfolio as a makeup right. artist and your skill set mm -hmm. you've gotten into a bit of content creation <laughs> and your podcast because we spoke about this with LB and she was just like girl <laughs> I'm yes. good. I'm good. I saw that. It's yeah. rough to do the transfer it's when rough. you're like, oh, do I have to? Like, I don't want to be in front of camera, but yep. tell me what your experience is. Because I know yeah. you do your, you know, relatable videos yep. and like your podcast. So tell yep. us about 
both your content your podcast because for sure. i think that some makeup artists are still not into it but i yeah. think also some makeup artists think that i have to be on camera doing tutorials right. or you don't always have to do right. that you can you can do other things so Absolutely. i want to know about how you have been going like through it yeah no that's great because Honestly, it's exactly that. It's finding what and how I'm able to show up that is authentic. And I think people can see it where I'm actually making con Literally, I'm not even lying you in the last week. It's clicked to me where I'm like, Rachel, you don't take yourself seriously. You don't like I love makeup and I love it. But I don't I'm not a do or die makeup artist where right. I'm like, oh, this pink compared to this pink. I'm not right. I'm not. It's so, like, give me the pink. <laughs> yeah, just, it's a pink. Let's hand it over. So I'm not as specific. I'm a little bit more rough and tumble with it. So I'm realizing I can't be the makeup artist that they're looking for that wants a really streamed line tutorial and it's going to be this look and that product and I'm going to dive into you about why this product versus that product. It's not me. Right. So I'm trying to really find my lane that I can relate. I have a lot of information that mm -hmm. I've had to come to like my confidence with and going, I, I've been doing this for 10 years. Right. And in a lot of different ways. And so I think it took me a minute to feel like the expert that I am. Yeah. And to come into the space and offer knowledge that I know I have and not be intimidated or not thinking it's not going to be worthy or that somebody's going to take something out of it. Right. So maybe it's not me recommending you five products and right. I won't be able to confidently do that or care, to be and honest. And that's fine. And that's fine. But finding my lane has been fun that I think showing up in my personality, getting people to feel more motivated, having more real talks, which is kind of segue why I wanted a podcast is I love Talking to people, that's my big, big thing when it comes to this industry. I think why I've even stayed in it is I love makeup. Right. I love the expression that comes from it and the creativity, but more so I love meeting the people. Yeah. I love connecting with new people on set. I love learning about you. I'd rather sit with you on set and learn your life and cool our makeup's done and like, all right, I'll touch you up, but I'm invested in you. Right. So that's a big thing for me. So now getting to sit with people like you or big people that I admire in the industry or close friends of mine, I love their journey and their stories. It's getting to sit down and share that yeah. was huge to me. So then, you know, the podcast kind of was natural in that sense where I came up and it took me a while to... Right. Be confident even yeah. in that and saying, I'm going to do a podcast and I feel worthy of right. doing that, putting my name out there and saying, hey, I'm going to host this and bring people right. on. Every single time somebody says, yes, I'm coming on, I'm in shock. Right. I'm still like, wait, really? You're going to come on? I, I'm going to cry. Every time. Like, <laughs> yeah, every time I'm like, that's insane that you you feel down or, or want to yeah. support it or feel like you align with that and you're down to do it. So it's it's been a journey. I've learned a lot about myself. Uh, being on camera, as I'm sure you know, <laughs> like watching and listening to yourself is that's a already lot. a process to be like, like I don't want to hear my voice. Why do I look like that? Yeah. Like what? So it's just helped me in a lot of ways personally. Um, but the biggest thing is it just makes me feel like I have something of my own. We're right. always working for people, for companies, for things. So it's a nice thing to have of my own that I feel like I'm building and building with people that I align with. I'm choosing. I'm very select. I just like, you know, I'm trying to be very smart and selective of who I ask on and why. Right. Not just to grab a name or say I sat with so-and-so. Right. If I don't authentically either agree with things or or whatever, I'm not gonna have you on just to have you on. I've tried right. to stay very true to that in who I bring on, you know? Right. So I'm trying to just keep it as real as possible um, and enjoying the journey and whatever comes from it. Right. So we'll see where it goes, but it's been a lot, of, a lot of fun. And the content's been fun, but that's a slow, a slow grind. But wait, are you going to tell us the name of the podcast? Yes. Oh, my God. You see, we this is why know. I'm new. It's called Seriously Made Up. Okay. It's, it's a new launch because originally it was Inside the Industry with Rachel right. Osterbrook. It didn't. First of all, that's a mouthful. Who right. wants to say that? I barely do. Right. And it sounds like I'm reporting something. Right. So I was like, that's not even me. Right. So I was like, all right, let me go ahead and smash that. And then Seriously Made Up came to me and I just felt like, you know what? That aligns with who I am. I feel like us as an industry, we're, there's no real blueprint to what we do right. and how we're making our careers sustainable and successful. And everyone has different journeys to how we got here and how we want to go about our business. Right. So I just think it really is made up. And we're all yeah. just doing the best that we can and putting our best foot forward. And I just want to fuel conversations around that right. and keeping it real. And so when people are watching, they can find something relatable right. to like, oh, thank God she said that because I've been thinking or feeling that exactly. for the whole month or whole 10 exactly. years of my career. So those are the big moments as to why we do it. So I hope it resonates with people. It's been a lot of fun. So. I am so proud of you. Nothing. I am so like, I, honestly, I am no. so proud of you. I'm Look so at you. Are you. you kidding me? No, like, you like so many. At this you know girl. when you see somebody from afar and you're like, you, you know, we don't talk as no. much as, you know, I would like. I mean, we're all busy, this right? But you look at someone from afar yeah. and you're like, 
look how he should do in her That's thing. So like, crazy. I look at your the creations that you've made on your page with your makeup and like. You, you do a really good job at it. And yeah, that's why I was yeah. just like, you know, I really want to, like, celebrate. You know, like you said, it's not just yeah. about getting names. It's right. like, who do we know that's dope? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the share their story. Ooh, there's so many people, too. It's wild. It's like, when so we look at it, like, it can be intimidating sometimes. You're like, there's so many artists. But it's crazy uniquely what every person offers. Right. And even if they're not doing the biggest celebrity or the biggest campaigns, it's like, they still have had some crazy stories. Right. They've worked their ass off. They've made some dope creations that you're like, wow, this is an artist that's just wild right. to see. I totally agree. It's it's really phenomenal, our right. industry as a whole. But yeah. So you've you've been doing a lot. Yeah. And you've been doing it well. Thank you. In all of and you've been in this industry for so long, Rachel. Yeah. Like it's I mean, a lot of transition. And I think about we are becoming ourselves. We're transitioning. We're we're growing up, yeah. you know. What What do you think your biggest struggle has been throughout this entire journey? Because you're Thanks. Broadway doing all these things. Yeah. Like, what has been your biggest struggle? Honestly, when it comes to struggle, I would say, I want to say believing in myself more so than technique stuff, you right. know. I think technique can be learned. Mm -hmm. It can be practiced. You can finesse it. And there's different styles, so then you'll find your right clients. But when it comes to me personally and things I've had to overcome, it's really getting over those moments of imposter syndrome and, like, getting myself through doors. I've been offered, even in this last year, I got asked to, through a friend, to work on Isamaya French's team for oh Fashion Week. Completely out of my own anxiety said no, though. <gasps> Couldn't do it. Why? Couldn't do it. And I, and I, and, and I love... Love is my friend. She has no idea who the hell I am, but I envy in her career and her artistry is like next level to me. Yeah. And I was working on a job on set and it was a long day and I got asked midday to do it the next following day. Mm -hmm. And I just started going through all the no ways. Like right. I was like, I, what, okay, my kit's not ready. What if I'm not mentally, but I just right. talked myself out of it right. and I've done it before. And it's, I'm a big believer when things come to you that they're meant for you and it's like jump on them and that's when people are always like say yes and these great opportunities are going to come and I think the reality though is depending on where that person is me personally mm -hmm. I was too I let fear overcome in it I learned from that because I acknowledged that that's what it was it wasn't right. that I wasn't I couldn't right. do it or that I wasn't going to be able to show up and do X, Y, and Z, but I mentally talked myself out of it. Right. So I think a lot of it is really gaining to a good place of solid confidence right. and settling in myself to know that I'm worthy of being in certain right. spaces. So when opportunities come up to just get out of my head, right. get out of my own head. I'm really good at telling other people to do this. <laughs> <laughs> really good at being yeah. a cheerleader for my friends. And when they get gig, I'm like, oh my God, and you're so, but it's really hard for me sometimes as much as I am such a positive person and I right. put that out there and I want to motivate people but the reality is I do have a decent level of anxiety so I have to work through it and so right. finding my own methods of especially when it comes to work right. to jump off these hurdles um, it's been a journey but I've gotten better year in year out I interestingly started off the career a little bit better than I am now as you do when you're younger you're more naive right I didn't know I was naively in spaces that were huge and I didn't know who was who was who was who was right. who so now that I know all these things and the, the possibility of what could come out of that job or that person or that whatever, sometimes I get too big in my head versus right. just doing the job, right. showing up, taking it for what it is. Right. Might not even take me to something else. I right. just showed up and I did the job. But yeah, sometimes I geek myself out. So we're working yeah. on it, but that will a thousand percent be my biggest right. struggle. Little self-talk. <laughs> so really just get to a place where you build your confidence. Oh my God. Work on your self-talk. Yes. <laughs> and just take it one day at a time. Truly. It truly have to. Because I'll, I'll overthink it to the utmost. So yeah. But oh. I'm a planner, so it's hard. I'm right. always planning out months ahead. But right. yeah, my biggest thing. Little bites. Way better for me. Right. Yep. No, I am here for it. <laughs> I mean, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you so much for being part oh Thank of you Makeup Artist you. Month, the life of I'm a makeup honored. artist. Honored. You are incredible. Um, can you tell us yes. how to find you, how to find your podcast, yes, so yes. we can show you some love? Of course. No, and thank you so much for having me on. Of I'm so honored. This is so huge. I was so excited today. Um, but yeah, if you want to find me, I'm on Instagram at Esterbrook Artistry is my tag. You can also go to my website, which is estherbrookartistry.com, and you can just look up us on our YouTube and our website for Seriously Made Up uh, podcast. So it's not podcast up the end. It's just seriouslymadeup.com and Seriously Made Up on YouTube. So I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for having me. That's so, so good. Thank you so much.
but your questions are so good <laughs> really you got me sweating yeah yeah <laughs> it was very good